Tensor fascia lata is also one of the superficial group of large muscle. It is the most interior of the superficial group of muscles in the gluteal region. As you can see, these all are the gluteal region muscles and the tensor fascia lata is the most interior of all these muscles. This muscle overlies the gluteus minimus muscle and the interior part of the gluteus medius muscle. This is the gluteus medius muscle and the interior part of the gluteus medius muscle is covered by the tensor fascia lata. Now if I remove the gluteus medius muscle, then underneath it is present the gluteus minimus muscle and the tensor fascia lata is also covering the gluteus minimus muscle. Now we came to the origin of the tensor fascia lata. It originate from the lateral aspect of the crust of the ileum between the interior superior iliac spine and the tubercle of the crust. This is isolated hip bone with the posterior view. In the superior view, this is the iliac crust. The iliac crust has two lips, the inner or the medial lip of the iliac crust and the outer or external lip of the iliac crust. This is the anterior superior iliac spine and this is the tubercle of the crest and this is the lateral aspect of the crust of the ileum between the anterior superior iliac spine and the tubercle of the crust from where the tensor fascia lata originate. After origination, the fibers of the tensor fascia lata descend downward and inserted on the anterior aspect of the iliotibial tract. As you can see, this is the tensor fascia lata muscle and this is the iliotibial tract and the tensor fascia lata muscle inserted on the anterior aspect of the iliotibial tract. The tensor fascia lata muscle is innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. Next is the function and action of the tensor fascia lata. It helps in the abduction of the hip joint and it makes sense because it is present lateral to the hip joint. It also helps in the flexion of the hip joint and the medial rotation of the hip joint. And these are the minor function of this muscle. It also contribute in the stabilization of the knee and the hip joint. This is because the iliotibial tract stabilizes the knee and the hip joint. And the tensor fascia lata inserted on the iliotibial tract. So it contribute in the stabilization of the knee and the hip joint. Next I will discuss the gluteus minimus muscle. Thank you.